Hey, what's going on everyone? Meteorologist Mike Linden back again with another special interview. We've seen a lot happen this year, but perhaps a ton has happened in this one particular sector, outer space. And for more on that, let's bring in my radar space correspondent, John Zarella. John, I mean, this has really been an exciting year for space. How does 2022 stack up? Every year, it seems to be as if you were saying stack up, stacking on top of each other, layer upon layer of more incredible space stuff. Whether it's coming out of the private sector, whether it's coming out of NASA, whether it's the James Webb Telescope, which has just now produced definitely the most spectacular images of the universe that any of us have ever seen. And if we look down the road, NASA's moon rocket, SLS, the Artemis program, hopefully looking at the first test launch, perhaps as early as the end of August. It's just mind boggling, you know, how much is going on and how much more will be going on. When we last spoke about the James Webb Space Telescope, of course, you had said it was a big if whether or not it was going to be successful. Well, the best news of all is that we do know that it has been successful. And I, as you touched on, the most spectacular images of space perhaps any human being has ever laid eyes on. It was a view of the universe in spectacular clarity that no one had ever seen before. The very first one, for instance, is a wide field. It shows galaxies and stars in such clarity, looking back some 4.6 billion years in time. Webb has been described as a time machine. In essence, it is. This is hard for all of us to put our head around, but it looks back in time because of the time it takes for light to travel across the cosmos at 186,000 miles per second. It still takes all those years for light to reach the telescope. So when it does, what the telescope is seeing actually happened 4.6 billion years ago. And it's even better than that. There are faint, faint galaxies in the very back of that image. And those galaxies were looking at that light from something like 13 billion years ago, which is basically right after the Big Bang. So almost to the very beginning of time itself, when the universe formed, the most spectacular to me was the birth of stars. And that's actually gas and dust. It's really called a star nursery. All of those are stars in their infancy that had just been born. The other spectacular image I thought was one that showed five galaxies in very close proximity. And those galaxies actually forming stars because of the interaction that the galaxies are performing on each other, they are actually creating new stars within each other's galaxies. Every single photo has like just more and more to see. The other one that was interesting was the nebula, the dying star. So in the center of the image, you have this dying star and this massive cloud of gas and dust expanding outward. Science is gonna study all this. They're gonna come up with better understanding of how the universe was created. And they're gonna be able to look at planets way outside our solar system. It will be able to tell us with all of the instrumentation on it, whether the planets that they look at, which ones actually have the ingredients that make life like we know it on Earth possible. Just seeing the reaction of the images during the presentation that left the presenters kind of speechless for a moment, uh, just kind of, I think, speaks to what everybody was thinking when we got to see those images. As we continue to advance, we spoke about space tourism previously. The folks at the helm of those companies are kind of quasi rock stars. I'm talking about Jeff Bezos, Richard Branson, Elon Musk. When we last spoke, we spoke about potentially a privatized space station that these companies may rent space in that you can travel to. Now that hasn't become a reality yet. It takes a while for all of this technology to mature. So we're gonna see that down the road. There's no doubt about it. Where are we now though? We're really beginning to see 
we're beyond the very first steps. We're still in the, I don't know, we're not in the infancy anymore, I would say. We're probably in the toddler stage when it comes to commercial space. We're still waiting for Richard Branson to continue and fly again with his spacecraft. Bezos has been flying regularly with New Shepard, taking people up and back. When we talk about SpaceX, they have flown private citizens in orbit around the Earth. They've flown three private citizens to the space station. This is definitely a marathon, right? Not a sprint. You're absolutely right. You hit the nail on the head. All of these things take time. We still have Starliner, which is Boeing spacecraft. The first one a few years back, it failed. They couldn't reach orbit. They had to come back. No people on board. They finally successfully did their test flight, set the stage now for them before the end of the year, hopefully, to go ahead and fly their first astronauts to the space station. But once they do, then you are gonna have two companies with the capability to fly U.S. astronauts to the space station. Hopefully we will uh, slowly get to a point where, as you touched on, more and more uh, quote unquote normal people are out there flying those that maybe don't have $55 million to spend on a ticket. Absolutely. The next big rocket, of course, to take off, one that you have spoken about uh, for a while now, of course, is the SLS rocket, the world's largest rocket. And that flight, no humans on board, would fly a mission where the vehicle gets out, escapes Earth's atmosphere, then the Orion capsule takes off on its own. They'll fly out around the moon and do a way far orbit around the backside of the moon and then come back for a high-speed re-entry landing in the uh, Atlantic Ocean, the Orion capsule. That would set the stage, if successful, for the first human flight, which right now they're looking at it somewhere around 2024. Wouldn't be landing on the moon, but they would be actually going around the moon. So it would be the first time since the Apollo program that humans have actually gone that far out in space. The SLS is gonna fly to get humans to the moon, hopefully by the end of the decade. After that, you know what? All bets are off because of the cost of flying that thing. At $4 billion a pop, that's a lot of money. And here you got, you know, right over your shoulder is Elon Musk with his Starship. And if he gets Starship off the ground anytime soon, that will come at a really, really reduced price over what it's gonna to cost to fly SLS. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this all evolves. I'm sure you and I will have a lot more to talk about for the next several years. I am eagerly awaiting that launch. Very excited to, to see it. But I've gotta ask you, has anything changed with us being the human race going to Mars. That's really the marathon, Mike. That's really the marathon. <laughs> humans to Mars, if you talk about Elon Musk, he's been saying that his starship will take humans to Mars. As far as other projects are concerned, one of the big ones was ExoMars, and that is a plan to study and look for more signatures and signs of past life on Mars. And then the other big one will be sample return, which would lift off, go out to Mars, pick up the samples that the Perseverance rover has left on the surface, bring those samples back, core samples, from areas that they believe if there was some form of microbial life on Mars in its you know, eons ago, that it would be found in, in core samples from those areas. The technology just continues to advance at this insane rate. Seemingly now straight out of science fiction, out of Japan, we have scientists that are trying to make artificial gravity a reality. Yeah, that one is quite fascinating. It's sort of like a glass enclosure and part of it would rotate to produce what you need for gravity, 1G. They would use this thing and it would rotate around to create gravity, it would have green space in it, they'd be able to produce water, oxygen, 
but all the things that you need. The Japanese are thinking outside the box. Who knows what will even be possible here in the very near future. I, for one, just cannot wait to see uh, what, what the men and women of humanity uh, are really, what, what they're working on. Because each and every day in space, it seems like there's something incredibly incredibly awesome to just get super excited about. And then to see it actually happen is just the cherry on top. There's stuff that they're working on that we don't even know about yet because they're just concepts. They're just a thought, you know, in somebody's mind like, gee, what if we could do this? Or what if we did that? I guess all you have to do is zoom out, right? To see what, we've, what we have achieved in a very short period of time and, and where we're going. Can't, I cannot wait for it. Of course, next up, John, is hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, uh, an update here on the SLS. That first launch of SLS, when it takes place, uh, is going to be a monumental event here on the Space Coast. There will be millions of people here to witness that because it'll be the largest rocket since the NASA Apollo Saturn V moon rockets to ever lift off. When that happens, it's going to be an event like none other in the last more than half a century. I cannot wait. Hopefully I get to see it live. I have not seen a rocket launch live and in person ever before, uh, but that is absolute, that's a good place to start, right? The, the world's largest rocket. That's the one you want to see. Yeah, that's the one you want to see, Mike. John, I thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Of course, for those of you that are watching on the My Radar YouTube channel, like this video, we really, really appreciate it. Of course, it really helps us out in the magical YouTube algorithm. Of course, subscribe to the channel and click on that notification bell. That way you always know whenever we drop a new video. Or of course, whenever we go live, we have so much exciting weather, climate, and space content coming. And of course, John will be along for the ride. We cannot wait to show you all that is happening in here on Earth and beyond. For my radar space correspondent, John Zarella, I've, I'm Mike Linden. Have a good one, everyone. Catch you later. Follow my radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.